Here we go. Hey, <laughs> please welcome to the show, John Tartaglia. Hey, John. Hi. We are so excited to talk to you. Uh, we've been wanting for the longest time to talk about, so our show, you know, focuses on the, the uh, a 1980s pop culture because we are we were born in the 70s, grew up in the 70s and 80s and uh, yeah. associate mm -hmm. most so closely with the pop culture of that era. And puppets were ubiquitous throughout our youths, our childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, you know, even beginning before our generation, but it does seem, and this is only anecdotal, and I do believe you could probably, maybe you would know, I think there was probably more puppets in popular media in the 1980s than any decade since. Is yes. that true? Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's, I mean, I would, I would be scared to, you know, make that a fact, but I would yeah. say, I think you're right. I mean, I think, I think, you know, it's because by that point, the Muppet show had been this huge international hit. Sesame street was international. Mm -hmm. and I think, you know, Mr. Rogers and Captain oh. Kangaroo and all of these shows that kind of, you know, established puppets as a medium for television. And, uh, and I think from there on, it just kind of, it, it became the way to do it. Plus it was the days before computer animation. Yes. And so it was kind of the only mm -hmm. live action fant fantasy way to, to bring characters to life in a, in a live action setting. So I think that's, I, but I think you're right. I think it was really, I, I have that memory yeah. of the 80s <laughs> being nothing but puppets and, and, and <laughs> which I loved. Yeah. I mean, right on. You think about it, it was an era in which on the Tonight Show, you would have ventriloquists, you know? Yeah. Which, you yeah. don't really see that anymore. Mm-hmm. But, well, uh, yeah. it's a blessing and a curse because I think that because there were so many wonderful kid shows in the '80s that had puppets, I think it it did kind of retrain mm. the pop culture brain that puppets were for kids, mm. which is so funny because that's everything kind of the opposite of what Jim Henson was trying to do. But but I think that I think it's just the nature of the way we look at things, right? Mm. I have to say though, the family I grew up in, they were all about the puppets and the Muppets, and it was. It yeah. was a big event. Like, yeah, anything, yeah. anything new Muppet <laughs> was the Muppet show or the Muppet everybody. Yeah. 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 That was the yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, speaking of that, oh, I wanted to show this to you guys. I still have this from Christmas, I don't know, 1978. Ooh. I oh my still God. have my animal oh. puppet. I have one of those too. That's and, like, uh, and my Ralph. Oh my gosh, you have the Ralph. Yeah. All right. I need to run in my basement and go get my Ernie. Of I have course. an Ernie. Oh, oh, you do? Oh, I do. Is it the plastic one, the, the kind of vinyl plastic yes. one. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh so my gosh. Great. Yes. Yes. Of course, Animal is the best because he could blink his eyes. The other ones couldn't do that. Oh, I was oh. obsessed with that when I got that. That's so true. And oh, now I just amazing. wish I didn't put my hand in it because he's been in a box for I don't know twenty <laughs> years now. And wow, I don't know what was in there. You have, well, I have this. Oh wow! Look at that. Oh, it's very it's cute. the with the little uh the little thing that goes in their backs there's a oh, little yeah. plastic thing like so walk. not a puppet exactly but yeah he could yeah, i remember that the wrong way. <laughs> those are popular for a while yeah yeah so there's a lot of yes. look like we're saying it, you you had hey yoda was huge i mean mm -hmm. uh henson mm -hmm. did labyrinth the characters in in there uh et uh, gremlins yeah. the ewoks yeah. I mean, there was a lot of puppetry based the uk they had even more shows that a lot of them didn't reach here but we had terra hawks from there and uh the splitting yeah. image was you know in some of our music yeah. videos yeah so what was your first i guess the first time you saw a puppet that you connected with in a way that maybe painted a, a lit up a path for you for a potential career or i guess mm -hmm. or... well i remember watching you know sesame street you know like i remember as a child and i and i loved the show, and I, I of course loved all the puppets on it, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, the the show that literally made me want to be a puppeteer was Fraggle Rock. That was oh. the first one I ever saw, because I think you know I've I've been thinking about this a lot recently, and I think what it is is that it was the first puppet series I saw that had characters that that would evolve and grow, and stories mm -hmm. that would evolve and grow mm -hmm. as it was on, mm -hmm. and so it really felt like, and it was, you know, this epic fantasy series for kids of its mm -hmm. time and there was nothing else like that and i think you know with sesame street and the muppet show everything was kind of to camera mm -hmm. and the characters kind of existed to serve a comedic purpose or in sesame street's case to serve an educational purpose and they it's not that they didn't have very distinct personalities they did but it, it was almost like you know watching the show fraggle rock where these characters like dealt with really serious life issues mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. had personalities that weren't always you know sunny and happy and yeah. right. um, <laughs> and, and dramatic things i think i think it felt, they felt so much more real to me so mm -hmm. something about that show really mm -hmm. connected but i have a memory of like uh 
going to like Shoba's Pizza Place, which I was. <laughs> oh was, my like, gosh! We were just talking that. about that. Oh, were you? Last, last, last episode. <laughs> that was oh a gosh. major part of my childhood. It's like, and and they, you know, they're animatronic, but they are puppet like, and and I was obsessed mm-hmm. with them. So mm-hmm. I always loved anything that was brought to life mm. fantastically. So I think that that's why I, I by my own, I, I don't know, my nature was always towards that. You know, we're you know, just that's as so an cool. aside here, we're all from New Jersey. Why oh. did you go to Showbiz Pizza? Yeah. I went to Showbiz Pizza for a very short time. I want to say it was in Cherry Hill. Okay. Probably wow. Cherry Hill or, uh, or whatever was was near us. I mean, I, I, I grew up in Maple Shade, New Jersey. Um, mm-hmm. so, so I don't think there was one in Maple Shade, but I think it probably was like Cherry Hill or Pensacan maybe. Okay. It would be funny to like, to like look up the address and see what's there now. But. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, I'm, I'm from Jersey City. There was nothing like that around. Uh, really? Yeah. There nothing. wasn't a Showbiz that's what that I can call no yeah <laughs> it is and I, I'm from Belmar and I don't remember any place like that around us but I went to a showbiz pizza in Georgia when I was I guess nine years old or ten we were visiting some family yeah <laughs> I think it was a very you know I mean it was all over the country but it's funny like some people they don't know showbiz but they know like celebration station or they don't know celebration oh. station, they, they, or they had Chuck E. Cheese or right. mm-hmm, Chuck E. Mm-hmm. Cheese yeah you know, mm-hmm. but yeah, but anyway, so that, that was that time of yeah. my life was right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Fraggle Rock show was pizza place mm-hmm. started becoming obsessed with like the country bear or jamboree from Disney world. Even though I never saw it, I had like, the album, so right. anything that was like, fantastical <laughs> like that, you know? yes. At what point do you, uh, you're young though, and enjoying it on one level. At what point do you understand that humans are involved in bringing these creatures to life? <laughs> I had this really, I can remember the moment I was, I used wow. to listen to my Fraggle Rock, uh, album my lp <laughs> obsessively and i remember the day where it was like i used to stare at like the front cover was was this beautiful illustration of all the characters and then the back was uh if i recall correctly it was it was i can't remember if it was illustrations or pictures but it, all the credits were on the back mm-hmm. i don't know if it was an age thing like i finally was reading at a better level or something like that but i remember the day i was like laying in my room listening to the record and it finally occurred to me looking at the, i was like oh Jerry Nelson as mm. Gobo Fraggle, Pog, Gore. I was like, oh, well, wait, there are, <laughs> there's people who do this and they do more than one character. Mm-hmm. And like, wait a minute, huh? <laughs> and all of a sudden this connection just snapped of like, oh, like so, it takes a person to make this happen. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there was a special that came out too, right when I became in love with the show. I really became a fan of the show in like the last year of it airing originally on HBO. Mm-hmm. And and they air this wonderful uh, behind the scenes special that I happened to catch. You know, it's one of those mm-hmm. like you know miraculous moments where before the days of um, DVR, mm-hmm. and and I and I remember Jim Henson hosting this special called Down in the Fraggle Rock behind the scenes and oh. showing the puppeteers working. And that's when my my mind was just like, okay, that's what I want to do. You that's know? your aha uh-huh moment. Was, uh, yeah, my my Oprah aha uh-huh moment. Yes, that was like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's it. I know it. You know, that's another wow. thing born in the 80s that was behind the scenes videos. Like we didn't mm-hmm. have that. I mean, they weren't, but I remember Indiana Jones was an early one. Thriller was yeah. an early one. Yeah. We started recording mm-hmm. and sharing these things. And yeah, yeah, we spoke to a stuntman who does stunts for Marvel. And he said it was the thriller behind the scenes video that inspired him to get involved in, in making mm-hmm. movies. So mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. interesting. I bet there are so many kids who became, who went into the industry because of those, uh, of those videos, because it's the first time someone says to you, oh, mm-hmm. people, this is a job. Right. 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 Just fantasy on screen. This is actually mm-hmm. there's people that made this and 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 gave the illusion of this being real and you could be part of that. And I think that you're right. I think those are probably really vital to launch to people's careers, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Right? Good point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I've heard you share the stories about how so well, it's public knowledge uh, that, uh, you know, you were one of the youngest puppeteers on Sesame Street. But I did hear you tell the story that you had visited Sesame Street even earlier on a tour when you were 14 oh. and got to perform. Yes, yes. I visited, uh, I was invited to the set and I, they were filming at the time, uh, I think it was called, I think it was the 25th anniversary specials, like stars and stars and street forever or street and stars. I don't remember. Um, but, but I was watching, I was just watching and, mm-hmm. and they, they were shooting the finale scene and they grabbed me and threw me in and they're like, you're going to do the count's right hand and assist the count. And I remember I was just like, my mom was like, crying and emotional because there she is watching her son live out his dream unexpectedly and and so that was like you know the unofficial first thing i ever did on sesame street but but wow. it, no. but it was, 
Not really. I wasn't contracted or anything. <laughs> Child no, labor. Until no, after. No, until after. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, now wait a second, though. Jerry Nelson. He he created the count, right? So, yes. are you? Do you understand that that's Jerry Nelson, who's Gobo? Who? I mean, does that yeah, dawn on you at some point? He, he actually wasn't there that day. He, uh, oh, he okay. He already filmed his stuff, and this was like the big group finale. So someone else. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Wonderful opportunity. John Kennedy was performing it. Who was you know so nice to me and so patient with this you know petrified sweating 14 year old who was like oh my god um <laughs> yes i mean i mean jerry was there at, on sesame street for my first few years on the show and 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 uh oh. you know so to, so to get to work with him and get to know him as a person but also get to watch his techniques and the way he came up with voices and the way he did characters i feel like that was so helpful getting to play gobo all these years later just to kind mm -hmm. of you know, I, just to know a little enough of Jerry to, to kind of see him and feel him, you know, when, when I'm doing Gobo. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. so cool. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but it seems like a natural segue here. Of course, unfortunately, we lost uh, Mr. Nelson some years ago, but his his voice, as, as you as you mentioned, uh, he created so many characters in such a distinct voice that, uh, I don't know, such a great comfort in hearing the characters that he created. You know, I feel the same way about uh, Dave Gulls, too, you know, when you hear yeah. some of his voices. It's just mm -hmm. something so familiar and... Well, you know, I guess I shouldn't jump ahead too far. So, uh, <laughs> you, look, this is what we're talking about, right? You now, well, okay, in this era, like you mentioned about computer, uh, there'll be a question here. Just hang on. No, Will, you're not excited at all. Okay, I see Carly. <laughs> she's not even on screen, but I could just have a sense of her oh, <laughs> presence. <laughs> Judging. Okay. Uh, no. So, look, in this era, like you mentioned, of CGI. Uh, yeah. puppets haven't gone away. They still exist. We still got a number of, of shows that exist out there now. We just saw, uh, was it Muppets Mayhem just got greenlit. Yeah. That's exciting. Um, yeah. and of course your, your show now, Fraggle Rock Back to the Rock, which is available right now on Apple Plus. Yes. Uh, is here. What, what is it about puppets that even in this era, they can be successful or it's, you know, a medium that we still look to? Well, I think it's a combination. I think part of it from a, from a, material place from a you know comedic place is i think i was just having this conversation with a friend of mine who's a, a drag queen and i was saying you know i think mm -hmm. drag queens and puppets share a very similar thing mm -hmm. which is when you're in drag or when you're performing a puppet you can mm -hmm. get away with saying things or doing oh. things that you couldn't do as yourself oh. right so i remember back when i was doing avenue q and i had you know rod or prince or whoever on my hand and i would go do like a news interview or i do a guest spot <laughs> You know, much <laughs> old days of like Madam, like you were mentioning um, Ventriloquist on the Tonight Show back in the day. Right. You know, like Madam, really like performed by Waylon Flowers or or Miss Piggy. You know, you, I I could say things in character that people would love because mm -hmm. there's, there's such big choices that you that you would never I could never get away with this myself. <laughs> and drag queens have that too, right? So mm -hmm. I think I think that there is a a a, a fun to puppets in that way that you never know what they're going to say mm -hmm. and. You look at the great performances, you just mentioned two of them, Jerry Nelson and Dave Goals, who, mm -hmm. you know, brilliantly improvise and brilliantly say things in character that are just so right because they're so true to the character. Um, so I think that's part of it. I think the other part of it is, you know, I was just saying recently, I think puppets are the last magic trick, mm -hmm. meaning that mm -hmm. we're, so, we're so smart now in, in, and very savvy when it comes to how things are made and how things are done because we grew up with behind the scenes specials because we lived in the age of dvds where you could watch all the all the extras and now mm -hmm. everything is available all the time on youtube and, and otherwise mm -hmm. right. we're not fooled you know it's like we know how they filmed that that car chase we know how they filmed that giant explosion we know that those giant moving creatures are cgi they're not real you know we, we're just we just we just kind of know mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. puppet, there's something about when you put a puppet on your hand and these very usually simple creatures that have you know ping pong balls for eyes and and, and <laughs> skins and fur but the way that you tilt your hand or the way that we make them move you totally give in and you buy it mm -hmm, and there's mm -hmm. something um there's a palpable fascination with that and i think it's because you can't define it i can't define it and i do it for mm -hmm. a living it's what it's my passion but it's mm -hmm. like i can't tell you why i understand what what to do with it to make you believe it it just feels right mm -hmm. and you know, it's funny, they, they used to get letters back in the day on The Muppet Show where people would say, you know, to Frank Oz or, or in character to Miss Piggy, they would say, I love it when Miss Piggy bats her eyes at Kermit, or, you know, uh, uh, flicks her eyelashes and bats her eyes at mm. Kermit. 
Mm-hmm. And what's so funny is Miss Piggy's eyes don't move. Right. <laughs> they, they have no, they're not, there's no mechanics. There's nothing. It's wow. all the way that Frank <laughs> would tilt the head or perform the character. And yeah. you fill in the blank and you make that up in your head what she's doing. But it feels wow. so real. So yeah. I think there's just, it's, it's like a magic trick. It's like, there's, it's like you can't, I think it's the last thing we can't mm. uh, put logic behind so clearly. Why mm-hmm. this looks real, how it's done. You know, mm-hmm. there's people who still think we're inside. Like, I've had people, very intelligent people, say to me, like, you know, well, you're inside of them, right? I'm like, well, no, my hand is. They're like, no, no, but like, you're like, your whole body's in there, right? I'm like, no, I was like, not usually, some puppets, but not really. Like, yeah. I was like, I'm just wearing that fraggle to my elbow. That's it. And they're like, really? Like, I realized <laughs> magic. Yeah. Maybe because we went so many years without it recently, maybe because there weren't, there were very few puppet mm. things in the late. Mm-hmm. In 2000s maybe it's mm-hmm. become a new new people are rediscovering it maybe i'm not sure 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 <laughs> it's it's fresh again <laughs> yeah it's, it's interesting yeah. you guess some cat you were saying something no no i just i just was thinking like okay big bird somebody had to be inside big bird yes. 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 and yeah but someone and inside a sheep and yeah <laughs> yeah even if there you know yeah, I was saying, even you say that though the fact that your hand your human hand is inside it already there's literally oh. life inside it it's yeah, it, yeah. Well, and it's very, um, it goes back to the caveman days. I mean, there's evidence of puppetry from our oh, earliest wow. years. And it's, and it's, it's interesting. I mean, I, I, it, it, I, I don't know. I think it's just this weird primal thing. You know, the other thing I'll tell you that's really funny is I had a psychologist once say to me, um, I was talking about puppetry and they were saying, uh, I was saying, it's so funny whenever I put a puppet on for an adult, not for a kid, usually sometimes for kids, but usually for an adult. And, you know, when they would come visit Sesame street or come mm-hmm. visit a set that we're filming on and you mm-hmm. go up to have a puppet and say, hello, one of the first things that people would do would stick their finger in the puppet's mouth and poke it. And, and which is rude. So, what's rude, but it's weird. And I find, and the psychologist said, he's like, well, they're trying to, they're trying to break the reality. They're mm. trying, their human instinct is to go, that's not real. This mm-hmm. isn't real. Wow. Uh-huh. And, and, and all of a sudden this creature is talking to that. It's like an uncanny valley thing. Yeah. So I think that was really interesting. And I, I don't know if that's, I might mean, have just been like someone just, you know, giving a, yeah. a time story psychology. <laughs> I don't know if it's really right. true. But I love that. I mean, it makes sense yeah. because it's funny that, that that's something that people just naturally do. So yeah. I don't know. Like, it's just the magic of it. It's funny. I don't know what it says yeah. about me. I'd probably want to have a conversation with a puppet. Yeah, I wouldn't want, want to break the reality. You believe in magic. Yeah. Not, you, you believe it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's ahead, funny look. you mentioned Uncanny Valley. That the fact that look, we're getting really good at now with these deep fakes. But those are using an actual image of a human. They're yeah. not trying to recreate a human. But yeah. that we can look at, like you said, ping pong ball eyes and connect with it in a way that we can't connect with a CGI face of a mm-hmm. human. You know that not yeah. yet mm-hmm. anyway, and probably never. I would think deep fakes well, are it, an well, exception. It, it, it taps into something in your childhood. I mean, I think that's mm-hmm. that's the thing I love about it is is you can watch the most jaded group of adults, yeah. you know, who've had hard lives and, 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 and aren't necessarily in the best places in their lives and can be in really difficult circumstances. And you bring a puppet out, especially mm-hmm. one from their childhood that they know. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you, you see it, you see this transformation into this innocence and this belief of it. And I love that. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love that it can bring, it can bring people back to that time in their lives. I think it's like going to Disney World and seeing Mickey. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. I, mean, I think that's why so many adults still love to go. It's it's just like it, it, it's it's a it's a familiar. Everything just feels right when you're when you're around that part. Uh, mm-hmm. When you're around something that brings back those good memories, you know. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. And speaking about bringing back those good memories, oh, let's yes. not forget to talk about Fraggle Rock. Right. <laughs> <laughs> back to the Rock, available right now on Apple Plus. Now, I wanted to mention because so we we talked about Fraggle Rock a few episodes ago. I think when the show mm-hmm. premiered, because yes. we were very excited for it to come back because, it, like we mentioned, it's a very big part of our childhood. And at that time, we talked about how it was a communal thing. Mm-hmm. It was an event, mm-hmm. and Kat, you told the story about how it was in a how it was what a, a event television for you. It was an event, yeah. We, we we had the HBO, and I remember my aunt and uncle came over, and and there there was some other friend of the family, and for the premiere of this show, we were <laughs> on oh, it board. Deal. It was, it was. <laughs> and it was the first, you know, it was the first television series ever on HBO. That's a lot of people don't know is that mm-hmm. HBO had only been acquisitions, it had only been movies, yeah. and it was the first original series on HBO ever, which oh. is, I think, so cool. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we figured out, Kat, they must have uh, congregated at your home because you had HBO. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> folks. 
<laughs> and, I, and I was thinking back, I just realized, I think we were stealing HBO is the only reason I got to see it. My dad has some kind of janky <laughs> antenna that he, in Jersey City, he raised up on the roof. I, I oh, know, yeah. He, got HBO. <laughs> <laughs> he paid $50 once and somehow he had it. As an adult now, I'm starting to, these things are starting to come together. But, you know. <laughs> You know, sp speaking of uh, Kat's, af you know, affinity, affection for Fraggle Rock, we yeah. tested her uh, oh, when we did this episode, John, to see, because she said she could, she bragged in an earlier episode that she could say all the names along with the song when the Do characters try out their names. So I'm going to play you a clip from that show here. Oh, okay. This is Kat. That was good. She nailed it. Wow. I thought you were going to have me do it now. You're just playing oh, no. the clip. Phew. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Yeah. First try, she got it. It takes a long time to learn that. <laughs> so, I, I <yeah>. practiced. <laughs> you know, it seems to me in, in your life, there must have been so many of these surreal moments where, I mean, come on. First of all, you you, you nailed what you wanted to do at, I don't know, you said eight years old or something like that, and you've, you're doing it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fraggle Rock is the inspiration for this, you know, lifelong career so far. And then now, you know, and you're making the show, you're, you know, acting opposite folks that were on the original show, like Karen Prow, who did Red. Yeah. She's back. I mean, it's got to be mind blowing. Um, it is. It still is. <laughs> real. I mean, I, I had so many, uh, so many moments of just awe and of being living in the present and, 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 it's weird. I mean, you know, and this is true. I, when people, when I was younger, when I, when I was eight or nine or 10, or even in my early teens, and people would say, well, what do you want? You know, what's your dream job? Right. Mm -hmm. Cause adults always ask other kids, like, right. what do you, yes. what, yes. what's your dream job? <laughs> and I don't mm -hmm. say to people, it doesn't exist anymore. And they'd be mm -hmm. like, what do you I'd say? Well, it would have been to work on Fraggle Rock, oh. you know, because, because oh, I wanted, I, and I would tell people, oh, I was born in the wrong era. I was, you know, if only I'd been born, you know, 15 years earlier, like, you know, I, I, it was something that I, I felt so sure I, I wanted. And of course, wow. you know, literally, literally the year I pretty much found the show was the year it went off the air. So there, that was mm -hmm. not going to happen. So mm -hmm. it was always a dream. And it was always something where like, you know, as I started working for Sesame Street and started working, working for the Muppets, whenever there was like, you know, an old Fraggle Rock puppet on display, I was obsessive about it. Or I was, you know, like when I would go <laughs> feature shop and they were building new puppets for Sesame Street and I'd hang out and I would see a box that says like, you know, doozers. I would like peer in it. And, you know, I mean, I was just I was always looking for a way to get back to it. And when I started working here at the Japan company a few years ago in development, um, you know, I, uh, luckily Holly Stanford, who's my, one of our co-executive producers and the president of television here is also a huge Fraggle Rock fan. And any mm -hmm. chance I, I got to bring up Fraggle Rock, I would. I mean, I think I was like the most <laughs> person here because i'd be like what about fraggle rock like all the time um but i always i just never ever thought it would happen and so, mm. so i remember the very first thing i did uh was a promo back in 2013 i think as gobo uh mm -hmm. and they, they just cast me as gobo i gave a horrible audition they had they had such faith in me that i would get <laughs> very amazing voice or uh, close to it anyway but uh and i remember it was me and karen who I'd known from other projects, and she, Karen is the kindest human being in the world. She really is, and she is, she is the spirit of Fraggle Rock. She's just that everything you wish she was and more. Um, and I remember standing on that soundstage, just me and her doing these these promos. And because I knew the show so well, and because I was so obsessive about the characters and about the legacy and about the stories, and the, I could tell you what episode this happened in and mm. what number episode it was. Um, wow. It was when we bantered. It was just. It was easy. It, I don't say it was easy. It was. It was petrified. I was petrified. <laughs> it, it, it was easier than I thought it would be. And and Karen even said she said, "Wow, she's like you just you're right there. Like that's Gobo." So oh. and I remember that moment thinking it'll never get better than this. Right, standing <laughs> on the full sound stage in front of a green screen with with Karen. So fast mm -hmm. forward years later, and our first couple of days shooting in Calgary for the for the reboot, standing on a stage in. Fraggle Rock with mm. you know, 20 extra puppets and doozers and you know all five puppets. And I just remember I would get teary eyed. I'd have to I'd have to like not think about it because I would mm -hmm. start my like you, know, you felt like, full, I'm, right? You were yeah. I, I, it, was, it, was, it was overwhelming. I still feel that way. I still when I watch the episodes now, I don't feel like it's me. It's weird. Mm -hmm. It's very very weird. It's a very mm -hmm. weird, very weird to manifest. You That's know. what I was gonna say. Yes. Wow. Yeah. We believe we're big builders in that. No, I am too. And I, I always tell yes. people, I, I, the, the, you know, beyond 
when people say like, you know, what advice can you give my, my kids if they want to go into the business or what, you know, I always say the same thing, which is like, you have to, I, I'm a, I'm a testament to this. You have to believe in something mm -hmm. so strong to a, to an almost foolish place. I mean, I'm, a, I, I can, and I'm better now, but I used to be a, 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 a ridiculous optimist to the point of insanity almost, where it was like, <laughs> like, like, you know, like the house is falling and I'm like, no, the house is fine. But, you, but, you know, you, you, I do think you have to have that, that, that positivity of it's possible. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very blessed that, that I was able to, I don't know, somehow put it out to the, the universe enough that maybe the universe was like, please just do that long, so stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, just please, make it just, happen. Yeah, we'll stop talking about it. But, but it's, it's uh, no. I really believe in that. I really believe that in, in some weird way that my, I hope that my love for it mm. contributed to it coming back. And, and, and I mean, with along with a lot of other people who really believe in it and really believed in the show. Yes, you, you made know. it happen. Oh my gosh. That's so well, cool. I think you also. I, I should say also. I think you needed Apple TV Plus. You needed. A streamer, someone who believes in mm -hmm. this kind of content and who has the ability to put it on a global scale mm -hmm. and to make the show the way it needed to be made, you know, because no one wanted to do Fraggle Rock halfway, you right. know. Right. It was like right. it was like no, it has to be Fraggle Rock. It's got to be that big chorus of Fraggles. It's got to be the doozers. You got to have the gorgs. You have to have yes. everything, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's you know, so cool. uh, look, I think we should finish there because we. we taking up your time but also that's a perfect note because look the love that you have for the show that ser seriously does we believe in this seem to have manifested itself it's it permeates the show i mean mm -hmm. the fact that if you had anybody else create it maybe a part, i don't know if this could ever happen in connection with the henson company they seem like everybody's just amazing people there but yeah, yeah. you would get maybe some corporation that came in and took over it'd be a cynical you know just money grab it's not this show is just as endearing as it was originally in the 1980s it's something that i'm able able to enjoy, enjoy with my daughter who's now my age when i first saw it which is that's mind-blowing on itself yeah mm -hmm. so uh thank you so much for being a part more more part of our lives than we realized john and for continuing help uh you know this sort of uh us relive the something that was very joyful from our our, our youth we appreciate it well, yes. well thank you and i i want to say really quickly that i i yeah. it happened because of the passion of of, mm. of friends like you i could say now um <laughs> because i think that you know when you when you when you're when, when Jim Henson walked into the original conference room before the you know when this first series was being created and said you know I want to make a show that stops war, I mean mm -hmm. I think the TV mm -hmm. series comes into existence from that, yeah. mm -hmm. and it has to be made with integrity and love and and heart mm -hmm. and big ideals, and that's why we all loved the original so much. And so I'm so thankful you just said that because that was so important to all of us that we that we continued that vision on and. You know, the original is already so beloved that we would have been so f such fools to say, let's mm. throw all that out and just let's read the whole thing, you right. know, let's make it hip and edgy. <laughs> it right. I mean, it would make right. crazy, you know, and so it really was everything you just said is is what what it has been like behind the scenes. It was made with so much love and so much dedication. And, and I'm, I'm just proud to be a part of carrying that on. That Thank you, John. is so awesome. <laughs> you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quiz you next time and see if you can do those names again. Like, you know, <laughs> years from now, oh, see yeah, if you can no. hold on to that. Go, Mookie, Wendley, Bloomer, Rat. Yay! Yay! Oh, I think she I said Bloomer. But... Too. Okay. <laughs>